What up, loved ones? What it do? Spotty Young right here. You know where I'm from. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're new to this channel right here, just hit the subscribe button real quick. Give it a like if you think it's cool. If you think it's real. Yeah. I got the homie OG Rin from the San Francisco Bay Area. Come chop it up with your boy and shit, man. Let us know. Let us know, buddy. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Glad to have y'all. Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, to those who doesn't know you yet, bro, um, tell us about your upbringing right there in, in, the, in the Bay Area. All right, right. Well, it's, um, I was born in Cam um, Thailand in a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. During the uh, Khmer Rouge War. And um, I got to San Francisco in 1985 and stayed there. Grew up there almost my whole life. I grew up in uh, Tenloin, downtown San Francisco, one of the roughest spots in the Bay Area in San Francisco, period. And um, yeah, I grew up playing sports, you know, grew up in the streets. The streets raised me. And yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like as a teenager, it was it was rough, you know. Yeah. Because you're an immigrant, you could barely speak the language, and you know you got a lot of diversity and a lot of racism out there and stuff like that. And you know, growing up on welfare, Section Eight, in the projects, you know, you deal with a lot of people, and you don't know no better. You just run to the streets for for protection. You know, a lot of homies. You know what I mean, damn, bro. So, uh. You was born in 1985 in the, the refugee camp during the Khmer Rouge and all that? I was born in 1984, my apologies. Oh. I was born all in 84, right. yeah. and then we got sponsored by my uncle <clears throat> to go to the States in 85. Yeah. yeah. Damn, and Tenderloin, I heard it, it'd be cracking right there. Like, is it a, like... Yeah, it's, it's rough, man, it's rough, especially in the early, early 90s and stuff like that, you know, yeah. drug addicts gang banging anything you could think of man the ten loin got it <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. funky though and so yeah. i mean yeah i i can relate you 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 know eventually you can start kicking in with your homies you probably ex experience some kind of people trying to bully you or another group or whatever you had to protect yourself and you, of course you want to fight back and you start hanging out with your friends and stuff like that did you end up uh getting stuck in the california system also or yeah i mean as a, you know i got i got in trouble a lot of times i went to juvenile once a year just for fighting for stealing cars and it was just you know it i was i was stuck in the system you know what i mean and i tried my best to get out of it you know sometimes you win sometimes you lose you know so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You win yeah. some, you lose some. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, bro. So, uh, by the way, how did you end up um, meeting uh, the party Sandman from Tenderloin, too? Well, actually, he's my big homie. Like, um, he used to date my older cousin, my first cousin. So, he used to hang around with my older cousins also. And then, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the youngster. So, we used to meet, like, on the block drinking just doing doing what we do you know what i mean and then he used to he used to look out for me he said yo yo ren go to the rec center and play some basketball you don't need to be out here man so that, that's how we met he was he was you know he was the big homie and he was dating my older cousin at the time yeah for sure for sure so anyways let's just uh move forward to uh your experience uh when you was doing time uh, well where did you end up uh, doing your time, bro? Oh, man. I, I ended up doing... I went to two different... Three different places, actually. Um, uh, I was in that Shrimp Boy case. That big uh, triad case with, um, with, you know, with the mafia, with a senator, a mayor. Yeah. Um, so I ended up doing majority of my time at TAP, uh, correctional, uh, Federal Correction and uh towards near Bakersfield and so hey. shrimp boy yeah. case that, that, a lot of a lot of folks always commenting the shrimp boy is the shit shrimp boy is the hardest with the woo woo yeah yeah That's you know crazy. everybody's hard until the feds come at you you know what I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know what it's not a secret either like even even us that did time in the state 
some 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 of the inmates would say that the 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 dumb criminals are doing their time in the state prison while the smart organized ones are doing their time in the feds what would you agree with that no no everybody case is different man see the thing yeah. about the feds right you can't beat them you gotta yeah. you gotta because you know you gotta plea out or you take it to the box but 90 percent of 99 percent of the time people plea out because when you fight the feds yeah you yeah go to the box they're gonna hit you with max anything damn bro and, and you know like with the fed system it could be a he say she say and you already lost and state yeah. you have to have to prove it you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean you you can't you you can't go with a wiretap and be like oh yeah you know he's saying this he's saying that for example for example my case right they try to give me a murder for hire charge i don't i don't know if you want me to talk about this but... it's all good yeah as long as we don't incriminate anybody else what's done is already done we're just sharing it okay yeah yeah uh, off top i respect that i respect that so this is about me so in my case right so they try to give me a murder for hire charge and so basically we was, i was meeting with a mob boss and he ended up being an undercover agent you know we were talking about weapons talking about you know just just bar talk talking about bullshit yeah and then uh so he was like hey ren you know, I got this guy that owes me X amount of money. I said, okay. And he was like, could you get it for me? I said, yeah, how much, you know, how much you gonna pay me? You gonna look out for me? He was like, he was like, how much you charging? I said, how much he owe you? He, he owed me about 200 grand. I said, yeah. oh, it was just, um, yeah, just just shoot me 15,000. Know, yeah, I'll, I'll go get your money for you. And then the agent goes, you can have whatever you want. I just want my money back. Yeah, I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. I said, cool, just, you know, I'll get you your money back. They turned that around and used it as a murder for hire. Damn. I, I beat that charge. I beat that charge. That charge yeah. got vacated. So I beat that charge. That was that was that was a good charge to beat. That's the only thing that was hanging on top of my head because even the even the judge was all like, hey, you know, this was this was fictional, you know. You wasn't you you was it was a no victim. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he didn't. He didn't say uh, I'm gonna go kill him for you and stuff like that. I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna take that body for you for fifteen thousand dollars. Who the hell killed somebody for fifteen thousand dollars? Come on, man. Yeah. Damn. But here in the Philippines, though, man. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. PI ain't no joke, man. PI ain't no joke. But but this yeah. is, this is, this is happening during like you know like because there was like five different there was like four different groups in this whole case. I had thirty two co defendants. So, yes. you know, it, it was, it was horrible. You know what I mean, I sat fighting my case for four years because yeah. they wanted to give me, yeah, they wanted to give me 15 years for a gun charge. I was, my gun charge, what I went to prison for was selling guns without a license. Yeah. Like, and they, they gave me 72 months for that, but I had, you know, I beat uh, conspiracy to aid and baiting. I beat the murder for hire. I beat more gun charges. They tried to give me with a RICO. RICO is an organized crime uh, charge. Um, they, you know, they try to connect me with um, some other gangs in in um, in Oakland, California. I had no ties to. They tried to hit me with a lot of stuff, bro. They trying to throw the whole book at your ass, shit, man. Yeah, yeah. So That's the crazy. Time, they, they wouldn't go down. They started from 15 years to 10 years to eight years to six years. I mean, to 72 months. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm, you know, the system beat me up, man. You know, 23 hour lockdown. You only, yeah. get, you know, you get a 15 minute phone call. It, it, it was just horrible, man. Damn, was, bro. So, yeah. I mean, eventually. Any street motherfuckers out there on the street, any street nigga right there that are active are eventually going to end up doing time. Unless, even if they're, even if they're snitch line or super snitch, they're still going to end up doing time anyways, even if it's just a little bit, if they're real active with the business, right? So right. you found yourself sleeping in the bathroom, locked down 23 hours for years and years. When did you end up realizing, like, ah, oh, man, this is for the birds, this, this, this booboo, this, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
Yeah. I, you know, you don't really think about that when you bust in the move or you make money. You really don't. Yes, sir. That shit. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then, but when once that door closed, boom, you 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 in the bullpen getting getting processed and stuff like that. And then you really realize it when you see the food that they feed you. <laughs> I, I put the I put that on my mama, man. Like they serve beans for three three times a day. Beans, beans, beans. Yeah. And you're supposed you are supposed to be because like in the Bay Area in San Francisco, right? Yeah. They close down the fair a uh, fair facility for fighting your case. So in the federal system, you know, you get top of the line food. But since they closed it, we was in the county jail. So you already know how county jail of Rockwood. You know what I mean, mm. so, so all this stuff, and then and then you notice all the people that come in and out, come in and out. And you're like, yeah. bro, you got a you got a chance to to change. You got bail. You got you know you, you did time served or whatnot. And but you just keep coming back. What you love the food or something? Like like what the fuck going on? Like. This shit is for like some, yeah, it's for the birds. It's definitely for the birds. But like, I met a lot of good people. I met a lot of dumb motherfuckers, bro. Yes, sir. Like, yes, sir. You really, you, you in an environment, a hostile environment, and you see all kind of like uh, colors. Like, you know, yeah. like p- people could be snakes, people could be, you know, like special or like, you know, all kind of attitude and all kind of, people in general he's just like yeah characters exactly i'm sorry i'm sorry that, that was the word i was looking for a lot of characters and 99 of the time is everybody a snake so you gotta yeah. stick to your people it doesn't matter what race they are and stuff like that but it's your people people you know what i mean the people that you trust the most but yeah. in the federal system in the west coast yeah the politics is just like the states but it's not as as rough as the states, you get what I'm saying? Because, you know, in the feds, they call it club fed. Like, you know, like you in a country club, you know what I mean? But but don't get me wrong, I was I, I went from a medium to a low. But when you're in a, in a max, in that medium, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, got that banger on you, bro. You gotta stick with your people, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. man. Yeah. That's crazy though. But uh, how much? Uh, how many years did you end up doing? Seventy-two months total, um, with an extra ten months in immigration. Yeah, so, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Eighty-two months total. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. After uh, after living your life for years as a slave, basically, man, I think it's worse than a slave because anytime the police says. Let me see your butthole. You know, what I mean? we ain't got no choice or else. You know, yeah. Spot, <laughs> For the whole spot and cough. <laughs> yeah, spot and cough. There you go, man. This is how it is. But anyways, you know, we have been through that. We've been, you know, uh, what happened? You went to immigration and then you ended up getting kicked out, getting deported, basically. So we, so I went to um uh, the the federal facility I went to was an immigration place. So if you are in. You, if you're going through a process of immigration and you were in a low, that's where you went to tap, to fight your case and stuff like that. So yeah. I fought my case uh, probably about uh, 22 months. And then I kept on trying to appeal and appeal, but the judge, I, I, I couldn't find a lawyer. Uh, excuse me. I couldn't, I didn't have the money to, to pay for a lawyer. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't have the, re- they gave me the resources, but you know, it's so much you could do with a phone call. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I re- so I talked to my family and stuff like that. And I, you know, like, hey, try to get us a pro bono lawyer and et cetera, et cetera. So we, I end up getting uh, my brother-in-law friend. Um, his, uh, his parents uh, is actually a, a criminal lawyer. So he said, you know, he's going to do us a favor and fight our case. So. Yeah, my charges isn't aggravated. You know, it's, it's not an aggravated crime. It's just it's just a felony. But since the immigration law is since you do over ten months, your charge automatically become aggravated. What so, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was fighting my case, and 
you know, even even though I didn't get charged, uh, uh, like guilty to the murder for hire, the judge kept on bringing it up. It's like, oh yeah, he he was trying to kill people. He's trying to kill people. And my lawyer said straight up, like, yo, why are you bringing up a charge that he he hasn't been charged with? He beat that charge. Why can't why can't we talk about the guns? You know, the, I mean, it wasn't no little handgun, no little pistol. It was um, it was a fully automatic AK and like and uh fully matic uh fully automatic ar-15 so it wasn't it wasn't like no little toy gun you know what i mean it wasn't yeah. no pistol. but during the process of my immigration trial and stuff like that it, it was it was heartbreaking like my mother and my parents, my children, my sisters are sitting there crying, fighting, bleeding. Like, you know, he never been to Cambodia. I wasn't even born here. But since I'm a refugee of Cambodia, yeah, yeah. you know, I have to come back to where my roots is. And, you know, there, there were times where my family members thought we were rich. It was like, hey, you know, if your son come get deported over here, we, we're going to hurt him if, if, if you don't uh, pay us money to take care of him. No so way. Dad, hey. I put this on my mind. Hey, that's crazy, yeah. bro. <clears throat> so I stay away from that side of the family. They're they're about 10 hours away from me, so they don't even know that I'm here. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's it's just, it, the immigration system, the federal system, every any criminal system will beat you down. You can be the strongest man in the world mentally, physically, it will beat you down because they will use your family against you. They will use the, the, the time and everything against you. And like it's it's hard because you know yeah. you're away from your family and you yeah. can do so much. Yeah. Okay. Damn, bro. Precious, precious time that we can never take back again. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, anyways, at least you know we're still free. We got a lot of homies right there that are still yeah. down, and you know, some of them don't even have a chance like that, but we're just looking at the bright side. We're still alive. We're still free. What you been doing lately? Like, what? what how, how did you? Uh, what you? How did you feel when you got out? Like, what you end up doing, bro? Oh man, what? You know, it's crazy because my birthday is January sixteenth. We landed here January fifteenth, so I spent my uh, my thirty fifth birthday in Cambodia free. So I, I, was, I was. I was excited. <laughs> yeah. That was a coincidence, man. Damn. Yeah, the first the first thing I ate was, you know, it was a, a barbecue, uh Cambodian style barbecue chicken <laughs> and some chicken yeah. feet. <laughs> so, yeah. so it, was, it, it was great, man. And then but a month or two later, COVID hit. Oh, that's when the they lockdown shut. happened. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I see. The crazy thing too is if I would have kept on fighting my immigration case. Yeah, they would have they would have released me. I w- I would have been home right now. No way. Yeah, I, uh, it was it was twenty five of us that got deported on the last flight two years ago. If all of us would have kept on fighting our case, we would we would still be in America right now. All of us. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, but you know what? I just want to share real quick that me me and some other party that I did time with. Uh, he wanted to go back to the Philippines. So when, when he went to the immigration, he signed the paper to go back ASAP. And then they, they yeah. released him right there. And I tried to fight it off. And I ended up staying and this still kicked me out. This is the opposite of what we wanted. Bro, that's crazy because we were forced to sign. Like, from my understanding, is like as soon as, you know, they give you that paper, it doesn't matter. You signing or you don't sign, it does not matter. You get ah, no y- y- yours is different. I mean, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's for Cambodia. And then yeah. the crazy thing too is like, you know, when you send in immigration, it doesn't matter what part of the United States you're at, right? Yeah, so yeah. Cambodia, Cambodia does this interview. It could be in Louisiana, it could be in Texas, it could be in SoCal, it could be whatever. So our timing was in Texas. So they gathered everybody on, on Con Air to fly all the way to Texas. But for the people from California, like me, I'm from Northern California. So I would have to take a bus from four o'clock in the morning 
from Yuba City, drive an hour and a half to Sacramento, sit there for like an hour, drive all the way to Stockton for another two hours, sit there until a bus come to get us. And then we drive from Stockton to Bakersfield. That's another four hours, but you're stopping at other places to pick up people. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're shackled from ankle, waist, and ankle, waist, and wrist. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it took us three days. It took us three days to get from, to get where my holding facility was yeah. to, to Texas. And then, and then you got to eat you, your sack lunch in your little, oh, you know what I mean? With, with your cups on. Yeah, I would yeah. never eat a bologna sandwich ever again, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Oh uh, damn! Speaking yeah. of, yeah, tell us about your um your restaurant, bro. Yeah, right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. you so just opened sitting... up your business. Yeah, so yeah. I I love fried chicken. I grew up on fried chicken, so I opened a fried chicken shop uh, in uh, in Phnom Penh, uh, Cambodia. Is in uh, in th in TTP area. You know, expat call it Russian market, Cambodia call it uh, Totopong area. So the streets is, is, is on 155 and it's called Teas and Rins, uh, grilling, grilling Drinks. So we sell fried chicken, uh, grilled chicken. We making like breakfast food and stuff like that. It's, it's all American food. I, I don't know. How to I don't know how to cook Cambodian food, so I, you know. I, yeah. And we in Cambodia, we ain't gonna make no money. So we sell drinks, also meaning like mixed drinks, you know, like uh, like margaritas, meaning like you know, you know, like tall glasses of slushies. Ooh. So we just put alcohol. We we just put alcohol in it. That that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good, bro. You got you got a lot on men, on your menu, including the alcohol margaritas, man. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we need to update that. So um, you can find it on Teas and Rins on Facebook. Teas and Rins Bar and Grill uh, is on Facebook. And we're just going to keep updating it because I had to close it for about uh, four months due to some repairs. Yeah. And I opened it. Uh, I opened the shop about November of last year. So I've been open about a year now because, you know, but yeah, that's what I've been yeah. doing since I've been in Cambodia. And also, I'm a basketball coach. I'm a basketball coach, an admin, yeah. and a baseball and softball coach for Nike Underground Academy. Ooh, nice, yeah. nice. So you can, yeah, so you can look that up too on uh, on Facebook. It's called Nike Underground Academy. We're uh -huh. officially a school now, and we do we do monthly camps for children from four years, two years old, all the way to eighteen. And since we're at school now, we give kids opportunity to, to get scholarships to play abroad in America or ever, anywhere they choose to. You get scholarship for academic, you get scholarship for sports. We try to prep kids, not just for sports, but for educational reasons also. So I've been there for about two months now and it's a, it's a uh, upcoming, um, it's a startup company. But you know, Nike is sponsoring us. Um, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of sponsorship. So we just we're just starting out, and it's a slow process. But for the kids, just to see them have a chance. Yeah, yeah. That we never we never had a chance to because I I didn't have a chance to to. to to play sports i mean don't get me wrong i did have a chance to play sports but you know when you're five four what can you really do you know what i mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but but so but for Yao Ming and them they... <laughs> ex exactly you know if i if i had if i had the heart and the mindset of like mugsy bogues and stuff like that then you know like you know what i mean but you know with yeah. the nike ground under uh, academy Man, size yeah. limit, man. Sounds, man, so, sounds good, bro. All that positivity, man. Just giving uh, all these kids options and hope and everything else. Man, that's well, that's an honorable thing, bro. And also, yeah. are, are you doing music as well? Or um, I, I I used to do I used to do music, but I have a lot of friends that's into music here. Um, it's uh, 
is a record label called Clap Your Hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they got this one kid called Ruko. Yeah. I mean, he got he he got bars. Um, yeah. And then this is uh, shout out to Cream. He's uh, he's the he's the CEO and the main producer of uh, uh, Clap Your Hands. Real good dude. My uh, my uh, my uh, man, but he was raised in uh, France. Uh, smartest man music and talent he's really great and he they got a lot of they got a lot of talent like you know they do r&b they do original my songs um but they got this one kid from another record label shout out to laura numb she's from the bay also um i, I can't i can't remember uh, her record label but they got this one kid called vanda he's the hottest southeast asian cambodian artist he, he do the drill music and he put Cam like he's he's the Cambodian Drake. I'm gonna tell you that. What? But like, That's what's up? But you, you, you got to YouTube him. His name is Vanda, V A N N D A. Uh, and then, sure. and this kid got a lot of talent, man. Like he got a lot of respect for his people. He he's not cocky, and like I don't know him personally. Uh, but you know, I, I ran into a couple times. He does a couple videos at my buddy Jim. Shout out to Cambodian yeah. Top Team. If you want to do the uh, the Gun Kmai, Gun Kmai is, is is the is the kickboxing. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you guys gotta check that out on Facebook and Instagram. It's Cambodian Top Team. Um, but the music, the music here, it's like anywhere else. That drill music is popping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Westernized also, then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm telling you, brother, uh YouTube it, Vanda. He, yeah, he yeah. go hard. He go hard. The beat the beat is on top. Root Ruko, uh Brotherhood, that's a slap. Uh, up, me and up. a couple of homies are in that video too. So it, it it was it was it's good. Like the music scene here is great. Yeah. yeah. Damn, Puma. Uh, I appreciate you, man, coming through, sh showing love, man, sharing your uh, positive message. But before I let you go real quick, do you have any last uh, message you want to send out there, especially to the young kids that are, you know, full of self-hate and they don't really understand like that, going to a self-destruction -destruct path? Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm almost 40 years old, so I'm, I'm going to say this to all the, all the youngsters out there, you know what I mean? Colors, gang banging is a lifestyle that you choose to be, but you can always get out of it. You're your own man, you're your own woman, you're your own person. You can do whatever you want. Sky's the limit. Don't don't be sucked in and don't be trapped in the cycle that America wants you to be in. And remember, it's all about money. It does it does not matter what color would you are, it's all about money. Money and respect, but be really smart. Don't be a snake. And don't fall for the snake. I mean, don't fall for the system. I mean, like, if you have your hands and feet, you can do it. There's no, there's no limit to what you can do. If you find a problem, figure it out. If you don't be scared to ask questions, don't be scared to ask for help. There's not a dumb question. I'm telling you, don't go in the system, y'all. It's going to ruin your life. I lost everything. So what I'm saying is, School isn't for everybody, but there's always ways to make money the legit and smart way. Trust me. Yeah. Damn, hell yeah, man. That, man, <laughs> I was, I was going to add, though, school is not for everybody, but learning is for everybody, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The most, the most knowledge is the, is the best thing you can have. How do you, I mean, how do you get knowledge? You learn and ask questions. So yeah, youngsters, yeah. don't don't be scared to ask questions. A real OG would tell you straight up: sticks to the stick to book and money. Education, oh. knowledge, is 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 what it is. You don't need to be on the yeah, block yeah. showing who's tough or who's not. Anybody can pull a trigger, but everybody can't use your brain. Your, your own brain. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real talk, G. And hey, you guys yeah. heard it from here, man. And you know, with that being said, y'all know what time it is. Say what you mean and mean what to say because real recognize real homeboy. I'm out of here, man. Stay Appreciate up, it, brother. All right. All right, brother. Thank you.